Studying accountability for over 10 years, I began to think, how can we move from demanding accountability toward discharging and exercising accountability for sexual misconduct at work? My name is Galina Gancherenka. I'm a lecturer in accounting at the University of Sussex. My main ambition in this project is to facilitate new connections between expertise providers and users. I believe that the MeToo movement impacted every organization, and many of them are looking for instruments to improve organizational culture, to translate these accountability demands into concrete organizational practices. And for many of them it is challenging because uh, sexual harassment it is still a very sensitive issue, it is a taboo issue in some organizations, and we show that there is a lot of practice available out there. Uh, there is, say, psychological, legal advice, training, technology, so you could really choose what works for your organization. The project has attracted different partners at different stages. I collaborated with NGOs such as Survivors Network and uh, Consent Collective, uh, public sector organizations including Brighton and Hove City Council, uh, Sussex Police and the Pensions Regulator, and businesses, um, technology developers, uh, world platform and sport, um, psychology consultants, uh, Meaning Beat and uh, solicitors. The project provides several webinars with experts, Survivors Network and the Consent Collective. We also have a LinkedIn community of practice called Empowering Workplaces and uh, there are about 50 experts from equality, diversity and inclusion and human rights uh, fields who join us online. Previously, before harassment reporting technology, organizations used to rely on anonymous hotlines and uh, reporting to each other. And both of these instruments, they have very significant limitations. When we talk about anonymous hotlines, they don't really help you to build high quality evidence. And they don't open up communication line with survivors and witnesses. It also brings data analytics features, so you could really analyze your organization and you could understand there are the problematic areas. So some uh, departments might be uh, healthier than others. What we measure and how we measure it when we're talking about complex problems is not trivial and the mode of collection can really influence exactly what's used and that data that evidence can be put to different ends as well. And so one of the really interesting bits for this project to kind of carry on exploring is exactly how that evidence applies, what's surfaced in the data by the evidence that we present, and then what do we say that means? And one of the really challenging spaces for this technology organization kind of human systems overlap is technology is all very clear. You know, it is or it isn't ultimately in everything, in, in digital technology, digital means it is or it isn't, it's one or zero. And humans don't work like that. Human systems don't work like that. Organizations don't work like that. I think that Galena's project will benefit all survivors and I think that many survivors of sexual harassment in the workplace, I'd say the vast majority, um, at least who report, are women. If we are in an environment where everybody is in competition, then it can be very challenging to put yourself out there and say something like this has happened to me in the workplace and I expect to be treated with respect and I expect this to be taken seriously. And I don't think the technology alone will help that, but I think having a system in place can make it a bit simpler to understand that actually if I record every time this happens and the date and the time, then that's going to give people a bigger picture of what's, what's happening and make them realise that it's not just a a one-off thing or even if it was that that one-off thing was significant enough to be worthy of complaint but we would definitely say that it always should come alongside the more human touch so there should always be communication with organizations like our own and there are rape crisis centers around the country and around the world um, to have those conversations and to ensure that there is a real culture change there's not just an app being put in place or a piece of tech being put in place without any of the thinking behind it because if that's the case then people just won't feel safe to use it so you need to have a bit of both um, which I think Galena really um, appreciates as well and I think that probably comes through in her work. So technology is an instrument but it cannot work without continuous improvement of organizational culture. 
and we provide uh, expertise and advice on assessing your organizational culture in terms of do they support their employees to speak up, do they support the empowerment and involvement of employees in decision making. Because those employees who have support networks at work, they are less vulnerable to sexual harassment. And then it will pay back to organizations because if employees feel psychologically safe, they also uh, feel comfortable to innovate and uh, to talk openly with each other and contribute to the long-term development and success of their organizations. Thank you.